It's now been a few days since the new Apple Silicon Macs were announced, and as expected, the internet has blown up. This is really the first time we're seeing pro-oriented, powerful ARM-based chips rival and often outperform Intel and Ryzen processors. Oh, and also MagSafe is finally back. So in this video, I wanna talk about how the 14 inch M1 Pro base model MacBook is quite possibly the best laptop you can buy right now, and is possibly even better value for your money than the M1 MacBook Air or Pro. Now, if you're a fan of my channel, I've talked often about why I think the M1 MacBook Air is the best bang for your buck. And if you're an average user, you don't need to bother with anything more powerful, so you can pat yourself on the back if you already own one. I still stand behind this opinion because let's be honest guys, most people buying a laptop are just gonna be using it for simple web browsing. Yet the M1 MacBooks can still edit 4K footage, handle extreme multitasking, and even run many 3D applications or developer tools with ease if necessary. But there are a lot of situations where the M1 MacBook Air and even the M1 MacBook Pro with slightly increased performance are just not quite powerful enough, and it can be very easy to cross that threshold. What I mean by that is, for example, editing 4K video on a M1 MacBook Pro works perfectly fine on a simple timeline, but add a couple of color corrections, 3D effects, and maybe adding a second stream of footage, and the entire editing process can often turn from enjoyable to frustrating. This is also similar for 3D artists using After Effects or Blender, for example. So let's compare the pricing of the M1 MacBook Pro to the 14 inch M1 Pro MacBook and see how they stack up. Sure, there's a significant difference in price between the base models, but once you spec the M1 MacBook to have the same RAM and SSD as the 14 inch M1 Pro, there's just a $300 difference between the two. This is what you get for just $300 more, and you might want to pause the video at this point because you really do get an unbelievable amount of extra features, upgrades, and improvements, so much so that it's impossible to cover all of them in this video. Now, I would happily spend $300 to get access to a couple of those features, let alone all of them, but I haven't even talked about the most important part, and that is performance. I won't go too in depth in this particular section as I did a deep dive comparing the 14 inch M1 Pro to the base model M1 MacBook Pro a couple of days ago. And I'll link that video up in the top right corner if you want to check that out. Now, one thing to note in that video, that particular MacBook Pro did not have 16 gigabytes of RAM. It only had eight gigabytes. So that will account for a little bit of the performance difference. But apart from that, essentially I found that in a lot of situations, especially GPU heavy tasks like Blender rendering, video editing stabilization, and 3D applications like gaming, the 14 inch M1 MacBook Pro was more than twice as fast. Now, a lot of this was due obviously to the doubling of GPU cores you get when you jump from the M1 MacBook Pro to the M1 14 inch MacBook Pro. So if you're doing mainly CPU intensive tasks, you may not notice such a big difference. Also, if you use Final Cut Pro, you will see a massive night and day difference due to the dedicated video encoder and decoder on the M1 Pro. So there's that to consider as well. One thing to note as well is there's almost no difference between the 14 inch base model M1 Pro MacBook versus the 16 inch version. Even though on paper there should be. The biggest major difference is of course the larger screen size. And I made a video on the differences between the two. If you wanna check it out, I'll put the link in the top right hand corner. Now let's have a quick chat about portability because this is obviously probably one of the most important factors of a laptop. Now the portability of the new 14 inch M1 Pro MacBook is almost exactly the same as the MacBook Pro. And in fact, I would say it's actually more portable because you likely won't need to take a dongle with it because this obviously has the HDMI and also the SD card port built in. And in terms of dimensions and weight, they are almost pretty much identical. And for me personally, this is the first time that a laptop has come onto the market and is actually a viable replacement for my desktop Windows PC. With an RTX 3080 and Ryzen 3900X with a huge cooler attached to it. Of course, for my personal use, I'll still need some kind of PC for gaming, 
But for the professional aspect of my life, which is video production and editing, this can do anything and everything that my massive desktop Windows PC can and probably do it even better due to the dedicated video encoders for ProRes footage built into the M1 Pro and M1 Max chips. Of course, that would mean I would have to switch to ProRes and that's a decision I'm seriously considering to make now that we have this new feature. Now, don't get me wrong, there are powerful Windows laptops out there that are editing powerhouses, but in my opinion, you just can't beat the efficiency, quality, thermal performance, and low fan noise of this new MacBook design. I think ARM-based laptops are the future, and so far, Apple seems to be leading the industry. I also wanted to touch on one massive bonus of this 14-inch M1 Pro MacBook, and that is the screen. If you're a professional doing video or photo work as a career, or even if you're just doing it as a hobby but wanna take it to the next level, you need to have a high quality monitor or screen to be able to accurately view and color grade images and videos. Sure, there are consumer monitors out there with decent quality colors and brightness, but traditionally you're gonna to have to spend thousands of dollars for a good quality monitor, anywhere from about 1,500 to 2,000 US dollars up to 5,000 or even more. And yes, I know that Apple's Pro Display XDR is a bit of a meme right now, especially with its $1,000 stand. But if you look into what it actually offers, it's actually really good value compared to other competitors in the same tier. So I was definitely surprised when Apple announced they'd essentially shrunk that monitor and put it in a laptop. Sure, the Liquid Retina XDR on the M1 Pro and Max MacBooks isn't quite as good as the Pro Display XDR. It has a lower resolution and brightness, for example, but it allows you to get accurate colors or color grade for client work, for example, even when you're literally sitting in a field in the middle of nowhere. For people like me who are more desk bound, I simply have my laptop off to the side and I do all of my color grading and color checking on that screen. And then when I'm done, I drag the preview window onto my large and cheap monitor and I just continue editing on there. Now, prior to the announcement of the M1 Pro and Max MacBooks, I'd been looking to buy a professional monitor for my videos and my budget was around 1,500 to 2,000 US dollars. So considering I'd have to go out and spend that amount of money to buy a monitor with the same level of quality and color grading ability, I've basically got this Mac for free. Anyway, just wanted to give you my opinion on this topic. If you do currently own a M1 MacBook Air or a M1 MacBook Pro, you've definitely made a good decision. It's a really solid laptop. But if you're on the fence about deciding between the two or you're looking to upgrade, the 14 inch base model M1 Pro MacBook is definitely a great buy and you definitely will not regret your purchase, especially with the complete smorgasbord of features you get with this bad boy. Anyway, thanks for watching this video guys and I'll catch you in the next one.